This episode is sponsored by Intro Travel. If you're planning a working holiday in Australia, their Oz Intro plus Jobs package is the perfect introduction. You'll get 10 days of accommodation and activities, plus all the essentials like your tax file number, Medicare, bank card, and help finding a job. Find them on Instagram at Intro Travel. That's I N T R O Travel. Every year, around 35,000 Brits make the trip down under for a working holiday. That's according to Tourism Australia. Jessica Ollerenshaw is one of the many young travellers from the UK who's taken full advantage of the opportunity to work and travel here. So my name is Jess. I'm 23 and I'm from the West Midlands, a little town called Rugeley by Litchfield. I'm on a working holiday visa in Australia and I would really, really like to be a British Australian. Despite only being halfway through her 12-month visa, she's already made a decision to extend her stay. I do want to stay here (laughs) because I've literally been here like six months and it's gone so quick. I just love it so much. (laughs) And Jess puts it down to being away from the expectations she feels back home and her new sense of freedom. I can't even explain the feeling. Like, you know when you just feel free? Yes. When I'm back in the UK, I feel like there's so much pressure to be, like, in a career, have a house. My aim was to, like, go around the whole of Australia and then see where I like the most and then perhaps settle down and work there. Why did you decide to go travelling around Australia? Pretty much. It's always sort of been on my to-do list. But with COVID and stuff and finishing university and having no idea what I wanted to do with my life, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do it. Because I was living in Manchester after I finished uni and I actually decided to stay there because I got like a management role in my job. And I thought it was really good because I was yeah. only 19 and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Like I'm doing so well. But to be honest, in the end, it was the worst thing I possibly did. I hated it. Like, I was seeing everyone else traveling, enjoying their lives. And I was like 19. My rent was £650 a month to even live in Manchester. So the, when I was getting wow. paid, I was just, it was all on bills and I couldn't even afford to like have fun. So I just pretty much had a meltdown, quit my job left Manchester (laughs) my mum was like just come home and save your money and go so I was like right let's just do it forget about the ego save my money and go to Australia and just be free (laughs) and has it lived up to your expectations so far yeah even more I just you know when like you first get here and you see like the Sydney Opera House and you you have to like keep pinching yourself yeah I am actually here it's just crazy yeah it's just it's quite spectacular isn't it oh my god it's just amazing (laughs) and how did you plan your trip because obviously you were doing this from the other side of the world you'd never been here before how did you organize what you were going to do did you come out on your own as well yeah so I came out on my own I was always going to do it on my own because I never wanted like ties of other people saying I want to do this I want to do that I just wanted it to be my travel I pretty much was just watching loads of YouTube videos and TikTok videos and sort of just worked out how to do it from watching all that and I also knew someone who did a working holiday visa out here as well so I was able to speak to my friend about a lot of the things and ask them a lot of questions which was really helpful and where have you been so far? What have you seen so far? Okay, so I started in Sydney and then we went up to Byron Bay. We went to Surface Paradise and then we went to Brisbane and then to Bundaberg, which is where I did my farm work. And then from Bundaberg, I flew to Melbourne. And then from Melbourne, I went to Adelaide and then to Alice Springs. Wow, that's you've done a yeah. lot in, in just six months I know do you know what now I've said it out loud I'm like yeah I have yeah (laughs) it's just been insane like seeing every single place most of the places in Australia and how different all the places are as well yeah you're noticing that yeah especially going from the cities to coming to the outback it's just a massive culture change it's crazy in what way what have you noticed well say Adelaide Melbourne Sydney is very very busy everyone's rushed 
going to work, lots of big shops. Whereas the outback, it's it's just so quiet. It's really peaceful. Is it like almost like being in a different country when you go from one place to another? Yeah. And, and do you know what? It's crazy getting a flight in Australia because when you get flights, you normally go into a new country, whereas I'm just going to another place in Australia. I've got a flight from Darwin to Cairns because if I was to get the Greyhound coach, it was two days, whereas a flight is two hours. <laughs> I was just about to ask you, how are you getting around? So there's this thing called Greyhound Coach. So you basically pay for a pass and you can either have 30 days or three months or wh- wh- whenever. And you can travel like the whole of Australia, just hopping on and off each stop. And it's so cheap as well. So you can literally hop on and off where like ever you want to go. Okay, so you're on a working holiday visa. Can you tell me, how did a girl from the West Midlands end up working on a farm picking tomatoes in Queensland? (laughs) Oh, God. How did you end up on a farm, like on your trip to Australia? Okay. (laughs) So basically, to get your second year visa, you have to do 88 days of regional work. So you can do hospitality now. They changed the rules. If you want to do hospitality, you have to do it either in the outback or Cairns or further than that. Or otherwise, it has to be like on a farm or packing shed. Yeah, there's a huge reliance on backpackers in the at farms, isn't there? Yeah, 100%. So obviously, I wanted to get my second year visa. So I was like, do you know what? let's try something new and let's work on a farm (laughs) because I've seen so many people do it and it didn't look too bad and I was like it's all about trying new things being in Australia so yeah so we basically did a month on the east coast and I was like right let's just get it over and done with so then I can enjoy my travels so we basically went applied for a town and it's called Bundaberg and that's in Queensland we got there and you know what facing brown snakes on a tomato field and being rained off and like the sweatiness and just it wasn't too bad we had our hard days and we had our cries and our meltdowns but we got through it (laughs) and regional means basically not in a city doesn't it and out Place in the sticks really pretty much yeah pretty much so I was quite naive when I first started like doing all my research for Australia and stuff I thought I was going to be able to do my like farm work in Sydney I was like yeah I'll do my 88 days in Sydney so yeah so definitely do your research but it has to be re- regional so if you go onto the Australian government website you actually it actually gives you a list of postcodes which are valid within the sector of the 88 days then you can just google the postcode and it will tell you if that's eligible for the 88 days to be valid so what what work were you doing what were you actually doing up there so our first job was tomato picking so we were literally from nine till half three in the afternoon would just pick tomatoes cherry tomatoes we'd just pick buckets after buckets after buckets and that is all we would do oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, let me tell you it was challenging on the mind <laughs> Oh, I bet. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but it was good though because you could put your earphones in and you could have a little chat to your friend in the next vine. But there's only so many podcasts and so many playlists you can listen to. I was thinking of things that I've never thought about in my whole life. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so you were picking tomatoes all day. Oh, Do you get a break? Yeah, so you, you get, a, they call it smoko. <laughs> You get a smoke for 15 <laughs> minutes at like 10 o'clock or something. And then you have a half an hour lunch break at half 12. But literally, your lunch break is in the middle of the field. There's one portal. You have to sit on the ground with all the bugs. There's no, there's no like room oh or anything God. you go to. You just sit in the like the 30 degree heat. <laughs> in oh, no way. Yeah. So it was hot. Oh, wow. So hot. Like there were some days where I was just, I was literally like, I can't do this. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. When you say that there was one portaloo, how many people were there working oh. with you? Oh God, there must have been about twenty-five people on this. No. Way. Yeah, but you know what? It was okay for guys because they could just go in the bush. <laughs> Where it was girls. Yes. And let me tell you, them portaloos were not clean. Oh, you poor thing. That's awful. I've been in better festival portaloos. <laughs> Brown snakes are really dangerous. Did you come across them? Oh my God, they're so dangerous. So my friend was next to me in the vine and all I hear is Jess, Jess. And I'm like, what? And this snake, this 
like he must have been like a meter long or even bigger <gasps> slivered past her foot no. in, into my vine and past my vine she stayed so still and literally it just kept slivering past us and we we told the farmer about it and her reaction was she gave us a shovel and said hit it if it comes near you i said i was no. like joking. oh my god i can't believe that a brown snake yeah a brown snake it was absolutely huge and I'm glad I've seen one because I feel like I've really experienced Australia now. Now I've seen a snake. <laughs> <laughs> was it moving quite fast? Oh, yeah. And it was so like, it was so, it just kept coming back and forth. It was like it was playing games with us. It just would not leave the vine and leave us alone. Were you not nervous? Yeah. I was nervous to come back into work the next day because I was like, where is he? <laughs> So how many days in total did you work on the tomato farm? I must have done 17 weeks. So we actually got sacked from tomatoes a week before my visa was like completed. <laughs> we, all, we all got sacked. So basically it was a random Wednesday afternoon. Why? Yeah, I don't. I literally don't know. I literally have no idea. She didn't give us a reason. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And you only had one week to go to complete your visa requirements uh yeah literally so like i went into full panic mode because i only had seven days left she was like well, we just don't need you anymore and i was like right but i need you <laughs> <laughs> yeah where do you stay when you're doing this kind of work do they provide accommodation for you basically so we worked for a contractor who sorted us all out the work and the accommodation transport and everything the first place we stayed in was in a motel Basically, we went a whole week without hot water at this motel, but then the place actually got shut down. So then we got put in a shared. Oh my yeah, I know. So then we got put in a shared house. But many people go in hostels, and the hostels usually like provide the transport and stuff for them. But to be honest, I'm quite grateful that we got put in a house because it made it feel more homely. And. Who were you there with? Who were you up in Bundaberg with? So basically in Sydney, I did a welcome tour and I met two girls on there and we travelled the East Coast together and then that resulted in us doing our farm work together and then we met people on the farm. Yes, oh, it was brilliant. nice to know people and share that experience with them. Yeah, were they all Brits, all your friends? Yeah, they're all British. And all the people working on the farm with you, were they British as well? Um, were they all British backpackers? The majority of them were, but then there was quite a lot of Australians as well. So there was about 10 Australians working on the farm. What? Aussies, like young people, or do you mean like farmers? Yeah, like young Aussie people. There was like these lads and oh. they were only about 17. Yeah, there was quite, quite a lot of Australians that do work on the farms. So what is, what's Bundaberg like? Can you describe what is it like there? So Bundaberg is like a little town. It's got, it's got a lot of farms and a lot of backpackers go there. It's got two nightclubs, which are not the nightclubs you want to be going in. <laughs> but you know what? It was, yeah, all part of the experience. Yeah, exactly. Because you've only, you had one week outstanding. Are you going to do some more farm work before the end of your first year? So I finished it off in the end. So our landlady was so nice and she actually um she actually found us another job on a chili farm. <laughs> on a chili farm? Yes. Yeah, so half four in the morning till half twelve in the afternoon and we would just pick chilies all day. Oh my god, that is so random. I know. I oh, literally and you had to wear like long sleeves, long le leggings, otherwise like the chilies can like burn you. And that's obviously in 30 odd degree heat. Yeah. So that's the reason we start at like half four in the morning because so, it gets too hot. Wow. How much do you get paid for farm work in Australia? So it depends what farm you're on, really. So when we were on tomatoes, we were getting $26 an hour. Oh. Yeah, it was pretty decent, to be fair. But then on the chili farm, it was piece rate. So you, if you like pick more than piece rate, you could earn up to like $300 a day. But if you look, Obviously, earning under piece rate, it was $21 an hour. So, it so just sorry, depends. what's piece rate? What does that mean? Piece rate is like how much you get paid by bucket. So depending on the weight, you will earn that much money. It, and is that is that decent, $21 an hour? Or is that quite low, would it's you quite, say? It's minimum wage. They call it minimum wage in Australia. That is literally like minimum $21. Yeah, yeah, and because it's expensive in Australia as well, like that's oh, not won't get yeah. you very far earning that. No, not really. So I'm glad I only had to do it for like a week. 
<laughs> and how did you organise accommodation and your working rights? Because you need to get a tax file number, don't you, when you get to Australia and you need a bank account and you need a mobile phone, sorry, a SIM card. How did you organise all that? So basically, I did a working holiday travel tour in Sydney for a week, which they do it all for you. So they sort out oh. your Yeah, it's amazing. They sort out your tax file number, your SIM card. Like they help you with onward travel afterwards, which I highly recommend to anyone who wants to do Australia on their own because without that, I would have felt so lost and probably would have it's felt... overwhelming. Lost. Yeah, it's yeah. so overwhelming. So I did that and it just secured everything. And obviously you meet people, which I did, and traveled the East Coast with them. So I was yeah. never felt lonely. Yeah, it's a great idea to have some help when you get there. Because I remember when I came out as a backpacker and I really found it quite overwhelming seeing you get there and you need a phone to be able to do anything. So you go and get a SIM card, but you don't know who to go with. And then once you've got a SIM card, then it's like, okay, I need a bank account. You can't get a bank account without an address. So then you need to get an address. And it was just, I remember, oh, because you need, and then you need a bank account to get a job. And then also to get a job, you need a tax file number, but everything, everything was linked. So it was quite, I found that quite stressful as a backpacker coming out to Australia. So it's great that you had some help. Yeah, definitely. I would have got so overwhelmed if I didn't have all that because it you just got to a new country, you don't know anyone and then you've got all that to sort out. It was, yeah, I was so grateful that I was able to do that. Good. You want to stay in Australia, obviously. How can you do that? So... This is what I'm trying to figure out myself. I'm thinking maybe work for a company and hopefully get sponsored, maybe. Yeah. What was your degree? My degree was in sport management. Uh huh. You, you know when you just don't know what you want to do with your life? This was the whole reason I came to Australia because I just didn't know. Yeah, of course. If I had to leave Australia, I'd go do a work and holiday visa somewhere else like New Zealand or Canada. Have you got any tips or advice for anyone who is considering coming to Australia on a working holiday visa? Definitely travel a bit for a month or two, then do your farm work because don't put your farm work off. Definitely. Yeah. For anyone that's wanting to do these 88 days, I'm telling you, it's not 88 days. It's always longer. It's always longer because you can't predict the weather conditions and you can't predict the farmers. Just get it over and done with so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I'd just say come out with an open mind and just go with the flow. Don't plan anything because every single one of my plans have changed. Just take each day as it comes and just like live in the present moment because it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be out here. For now, at least, if you want to extend your time in Australia on a working holiday visa, it's still a requirement for backpackers from the UK to do regional work a bit like Jess's tomato picking. But from the 1st of July 2024, Brits on a working holiday visa can extend their stay without having to work on a farm. They've also changed the rules on the age limit, which means that Brits can apply for a working holiday maker visa up to the age of 35. Jess said she couldn't have done all of this without the help of Intro Travel. Intro Travel have 15 years experience in helping travellers like you get their Aussie adventures started in the best possible way. As well as helping Jess find accommodation and organise her bank account, her tax file number so that she could get working straight away, Intro Travel provided a community for Jess to find friendships and a group leader to support her every step of the way even after her tour had finished. Intro Travel also offer group tours in destinations all over the world. What makes them different is that all activities, accommodation, transport and a bunch of meals are included in the price up front. So whether you want to explore Australia, Thailand, Bali or any of their other amazing destinations, they've got you covered. Go to www introtravel.com. You can also follow them on Instagram at introtravel. That's I-N-T-R-O travel. And if you do go ahead with intro travel, use the code BRIT, B-R-I-T, to get 5% off of any of their award-winning group tours. 